NFL Live is presented by Golden Corral. Greetings once again from downtown Atlanta, soon to be site of Super Bowl 53. Our home this week, the beautiful Centennial Olympic Park, just a stone's throw away from the brand new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Happy Thursday, everybody, on this busy Super Bowl week. We're glad you could spend a part of it with us. We got everybody here. I'm Wendy Nix, Chris Mortensen, Booger, back for a second day. Days in a row. We didn't scare him off. Ryan Clark is here. So, too, is Lewis Riddick. Russell Wilson will stop by. Saquon Barkley will join us. It's jam-packed. But first, we start with one of the two teams still standing, the Los Angeles Rams. Sean McVay and company continued their preparations earlier today. The Rams are practicing at the Falcons practice facility in nearby Flowery Branch. Los Angeles is getting ready for its first Super Bowl since 2001. How about the Patriots? They held their first official practice in Atlanta on Wednesday. They, of course, in their third Super Bowl. New England, with a win on Sunday, can tie the Steelers for the most Super Bowl championships all time. And who knows that better than our Sal Palantonio, who caught up with none other than Tom Brady earlier today. Sal? Wendy, it was interesting. I caught up with Tom Brady, and you know the essence of Tom Brady right now is that he is in the moment. You could just tell he's calm, he's peaceful. Peaceful. I've covered this guy since his first Super Bowl for 17 years since he took over for Drew Bledsoe. He's just different this time around. I asked him about practice. I want you to listen to what he says, but also how he says it. Listen to this. You know, I think we're, we're, we're working on it. We're getting closer. I don't think we're a finished product yet. We've still got two more days. And um, hopefully we can correct the things we messed up today and, and move forward. How was your energy team-wise today in practice? I always have good positive energy. I'm, I like having fun out there, you know, to get to, you know, to, to be preparing like this. It's pretty unique and special. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to have two more good days of practice. And, and that's our physical prep. And most of our mental prep will be done. Then we got to go play our best 60 minutes. Hey, congratulations on getting back to the Super Bowl. Thank you. See you Super Appreciate Bowl it. Sunday. Good to see you, man. Okay, you too. Sounds good. You know, and it's this attitude that Tom Brady has is just trickling down to this Patriots team. This guy is calm, cool, collected, off the field, on the field, ferociously competitive as we know it, even in practice. Had two touchdown passes yesterday at the end of practice. And an interesting footnote, Wendy Nix, in the practice report, the pool report yesterday, after practice, Tom Brady and center David Andrews stayed afterwards to work on the quarterback center exchange under center. Now, why is that? Well, because this year, this team led the AFC in snaps under center. They want to pound the rock, and they want to eat the clock, just like they did against the Kansas City Chiefs. But in this game, they'll have that center quarterback exchange even more under the microscope because Nagamik and Sue and Aaron Donald will be facing the center and the two guards and they want to make sure, sure they get it right. Hey, football's a simple game, right? Snap the football, block the other guys, deliver the football to the open man. Simple football game. Yeah, if only it were that easy, Sal. No stone unturned. You know that as well as anybody. Uh, Josina Anderson anchors our coverage with the Rams. And Josina, uh, in that equation, C.J. Anderson has certainly provided this team with a big boost. What do you expect heading into the weekend? <laughs> Well, first of all, Wendy, today will be the Rams' first regular speed practice as today they are expected to be in Flowery Branch on the field from between 4 to 6 p.m. And it will be an opportunity for Rams running back Todd Gurley to put his foot on the gas as Rams running back coach Skip Pete told me that he had to tell him to slow down at the walkthrough yesterday because he was trying to sprint. But regardless of how ready Gurley is to be the uh, workhorse, he told me that his split will still be dependent upon what the defenses present them. Now, I also talked to C.J. Anderson and he told me he will be fine Super Bowl Sunday regardless of what the split is, just like he has been fine with some of the jokes that he's heard about his weight on social media. Now, the five foot eight back, who is about 235 pounds, uh, told me he is confident with the fact that, you know, he has 466 rush yards since week 16, which is the most since then. 
including the playoffs, and with the fact that he's done it before in Super Bowl 50, getting 90 rush yards with one touchdown, and the fact that big boys with the little back have done it before on the biggest stage. That includes LeGarrette Blunt, that includes Jerome Bettis, that includes obviously C.J. Anderson and Icky Woods, who did not win despite the fact that he had 79 rush yards in uh, Super Bowl 23. But as you can see, C.J. Anderson is literally rolling with the punches. I don't really feel the difference, to be honest. Um, you know, in between the lines, I'm running the football well. Um, you know, I'm trying to pick the right spots that the O-line is giving me and just trying to be effective. And that seemed to work throughout my career, no matter what way them I've been at. So um, it's been funny, though. The weight jokes has been funny, and I've been embracing them. That's what you got to do. I got tough skin, so you embrace them. Where are you right now? Where are you normally at? Uh, play at 225. I'm at 235. So just put 10 pounds ahead. That's it. I know you've seen some of the things that people say, but your nature is just to take everything so jolly. Why, how are you able to do that? I think you, you got to enjoy and laugh at it. If you can't laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at, at, at other people. And I like to joke. That's, that's when, me, when me and my boys are, are, are hanging around, you know, we joking around. We like to joke and, and, and what we call cap on each other, sing on each other. So I like to, we like to talk about each other, whether that's mama jokes, grandma jokes, personal jokes. You know, it's <laughs> Your joke. mama jokes. Yeah, right? it's jokes. So if you, can, if you can joke on yourself, if you can laugh at yourself, you'll be able to laugh at other people too. <laughs> well, everybody has to be able to roll with a you mama joke. But listen, I've been covering C.J. Anderson since he started his career in Denver in 2013. And by now, everyone can see that he is very affable, putting things on Twitter like, hey, the fat boy is still running. But don't get it twisted. He is still a Mack truck on Sunday, daring you to uh, meet him in the middle. Now, I did have an opportunity to ask him, where does his explosive style come from, regardless of the weight and the fact that he is basically coming off the couch with those genetics and C.J. Anderson told me it comes from his older brother who did also play football but whose career uh, was cut short in high school due to a, a big injury so that is who he gets his inspiration from to still run the way he does regardless if he has a little extra on the hips Wendy uh, some of us know about that back to you <laughs> <laughs> Josina thank you he's a good sport there's no question about that the running backs will play a big role in Sunday's game at least we expect that to be the case the Rams and Patriots rank first and second this postseason in terms of designed run games, uh, runs per game, and rushing touchdowns from their running backs. The Patriots' backs have caught a whopping 26 passes this postseason, largely because of James White. He's been active in New England's passing attack. But let's start with C.J. Anderson more because I don't think there were a lot of folks who saw this coming, and they've combined to be a pretty impressive one-two punch. Well, it was kind of an afterthought, and then that Cowboys playoff game, he had the big bust out there, and I spoke with one of the top Cowboys' top personnel people, and he said, he compared him to Jerome Bettis. Uh, uh, he said, you know, the bust reincarnated. Great feet, great vision. You know, maybe not quite to that level, but that's how good he was in that particular game. I chronicled what happened in Denver. Well, they cut him for salary cap reasons, $5 million. Carolina picks him up in May to be a compliment to Christian McCaffrey. Talked to Ron Rivera, the coach of the Panthers. He said, you know what? McCaffrey just proved to us that he could carry the load between the tackles. And he said... He was with us for 10 weeks, but he said about C.J. Anderson, he said he's talented, he's smart. All those years with Peyton Manning paid off in terms of understanding the game. But he goes, he was unhappy, but he didn't undermine the team. I just felt it was fair to let him go. And look where he landed. Now he's in the Super Bowl. He landed in a pretty good spot, no question. And I mentioned the one-two punch. Of course, I'm talking about C.J. and Todd Gurley. But what's interesting is his production was down, Booger, in that NFC Championship game. He owned it after the fact. But what are your expectations for Sunday? Well, I think Todd Gurley having had a week off is going to be a little bit healthier. And to me, there's really no other explanation that he hasn't been touching the ball mm -hmm. except that knee's been banged up. And I get C.J. Anderson and the spark that he's added. But when you're talking about the New England Patriots and going against this defense, yep. you want explosive plays. Yep. You want those chunk runs, those 10, 15, 20-yard runs. Who's going to provide that? Todd Gurley, a back that's 1,800 yards from scrimmage. In the last two years, he leads the NFL in yards from scrimmage, touches, and touchdowns. So here's a guy you have to get the football to. And I think Sean McVay knows I can't drive the football 14, 15 plays down the field against this defense. I need explosive plays. Absolutely. That's the Rams. Let's switch gears and talk about the Patriots. We talk about Tom Brady, as we should, probably the best to ever play. But, Lewis, this has become almost a run-first team or certainly a team 
who knows they need to run the football. Yeah, this is a football team that uses personnel groupings that really have kind of gone out of style. 21, 22 personnel. James Devlin, a fullback, coming mm. downhill, playing smash mouth football. Look at it right here. Look, they're going to run a weak side lead and just going to double team the one and the three technique, the two defensive tackles, and try and mash them. And James Devlin's going to hit the linebacker in the hole here. It's Miles Jack. And he's just going to try and pre pre present a crease here for Sony Michelle. And then look what he does. <laughs> he's making safeties go, well, do I really want to do this all day long? No, probably not. Here they're going to run a strong side lead draw. You're going to see they're going to have great just kick out blocks, just turn out blocks. They do a great job of getting the pass rush up the field. Think Rams. That's what they're going to be trying to do. Get up field too. James Devlin again, leading up in the hole. Gets a good block. Now Sony can just do his thing. Breaking tackles. And watch how he turns into defensive backs at the end of his runs. He's not trying to look for the sideline. He's looking for you. So, and then here, it's a one-back run. It's a wide receiver in the backfield. So this is 11 personnel, and they're going to run a power to the strong side. They're going to double-team again on the defensive tackle. They're going to run a little bit of a motion there as far as a fake sweep look with Cordero Patterson to get the man coverage guy to get out of the way. And then Sony just goes to work again. They're going to hit you between the tackles downhill, and they're going to play fundamentally sound football. Look, you saw in that game against the Chiefs, it was basically 2-1 to one in time of possession. And Bill said at halftime, Bill Belichick said, we played the first half on our terms which was this. We're going to bloody your nose a little bit first. Then we're going to see how it goes in the second half. If we need to throw it, then we're going to pick you apart that way. They're the perfect amoeba offense. Well, they, they can audible in a heartbeat. Yeah. They will every oh. every day and twice on Sundays. Ryan, what about James White? We have seen what he can do in the passing attack. It, it's been awesome to watch James White become the Kevin Falk mm. of this offense. Mm. And Booger and I are very familiar yeah. with that guy. Tom Brady has always been the guy that uses the backs in the passing game. And if you go back to the beginning of the Los Angeles Charger divisional playoff game, they started with James White out of the backfield. It was screens. It was swing passes. It was ways to get him involved. He was one of the heroes of last of, of the Atlanta Falcons win for the New England Patriots. And I expect the same thing from him this week. James White is an integral part of this offense. Tom Brady understands that. But more importantly, Josh McDaniels does as well. And we've seen things with Burkhead in the backfield. James White together. Screens and different plays they can do off of that. And so I look for him to get involved early. And then they'll get to the run game with Devlin and Michelle. All right, we're just warming up. It's Thursday. Obviously, we'll have much more on this game. Two teams still standing, plus a rookie. I don't even know if I can use that word. A rookie who certainly did not play like one. Saquon Barkley is here. He sits down with a payment services technology partner of the NFL. And Saquon, I said this to Baker yesterday, but it is interesting to me what a difference a year makes. This time last year, you're getting ready for the draft. We're talking about what to expect. And now a candidate for rookie of the year. When you look back, 2,000 yards of mass from the line of scrimmage, what, how do you view your rookie season? Um, yeah, I feel like, it, you know, I wish the team success, we, we, we uh, did a little better there. Um, obviously, I wish we were here playing, but uh, just not even talking about stats-wise. I just learned so much this year um, from, from all the vets and all my teammates and all the coaches, um, you know, and it was a great year. It was a great year. I had fun. Um, there's nothing I can complain about. Um, I get to wake up every single day and say I'm an NFL player, and that's something I dreamed about since I was a little kid, so I try to live in the moment and cherish it. Now, Saquon, all those yards mean a lot of touches. All those touches mean a lot of hits. Those hits lead a lot of bumps and bruises, and a lot of them come after November on into December. Now, you play a couple more games, obviously, than college. What did you learn from other players? How did you adjust maybe your training regimen, your rehab regimen? What did, did you do? Did you learn some things late in the season to kind of keep you from hitting that rookie wall? Yeah, it wasn't what I learned late in the season. Um, it's what I've learned just in the process of meeting all these players, whether they're NFL legends or whether they're in the NFL now. And something that stuck to me that I kept hearing that people kept saying is, uh, I started doing what I need to do on my body about year four. Mm. I wish I could have done a little earlier. So um, I talked to my team, and I was like, why wait? Um, everyone's saying they wish they would have done it earlier, so why can't I start it now? Uh, so this year I surround myself with uh, massage, uh, acupuncture, um, physical therapy. Um, then obviously with the help of the giant staff, with other training staff and the strength staff, um, of keeping me going. Honestly, I felt like I got stronger. Um, uh, later on in the season, I hit my fastest miles per hour in the in later in the game, I think it was in November or so, against the Redskins. So as the season went on, I felt like I got better and stronger. So I think I did a good job there. It, Saquon, as often as we said your name, I feel like we also said Eli Manning, and he got a lot of criticism. He's played for a long time, done so much for the Giants. But what's your reaction when you hear the criticism of Eli and you hear people say, it's time to move on? You know, it's it's laughable. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm real big on... Uh, going hard for my teammates and I'm big on Eli and I believe that we can win with Eli and I was saying earlier on uh, some radio station is it's not the reason why we went 5 and 11 is not because of Eli everyone loves to blame it on a quarterback especially in the New York media and New York market but 
we went 5-11 because as a team, we didn't find ways to finish games. We lost eight games with seven points or less, and that's obviously just the NFL as a whole. It's going to be close games, and you got to grind it out. But we as a team got to find a way to finish those games next year, and I believe we have all the pieces and all the talent right in place uh, that we could figure that out earlier, which we did a little bit in the second half of the year, but we could figure it out earlier. We could have a special season. Look, I heard you say earlier that, you know, you hear some of the noise about what people say about, you know, where you should have been picked. You shouldn't have been picked at number two. I wasn't one of those people. <laughs> I picked you number one for the overall he fantasy was draft, just so you know that. Yeah. All right, so anyway, moving into next year, as far as, you know, you're disappointed about how the team did, you had a tremendous impact on your football team this year. No one can say any different. What are you looking to improve from year one to year two? Everyone has something. Mm -hmm. What is it this year that you said, you know what, I'm going to work on that a little bit this offseason? Yeah, the biggest thing that I'm going to focus on is now there's a year of tape on me. So defenses and defense coaches and defense are going to find a way to attack me and slow me down. So now I got to go back and watch film where I was successful and where I made a lot of mistakes or where a defense did a really good job of slowing me down in the run game or whether catching the ball. Um, what did they do? And find what they did and watch it and improve on that. So mm -hmm. I can come back ready for the challenge that's going to, that I'm going to have to face next year. Saquon, we'd be remiss not to ask you about the game on Sunday. There are two teams that are playing, the Rams and the Patriots. Uh, what, what would you expect to see? Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a really good game. Those are two really, really good teams, um, great teams, at, um, and with great coaches, uh, great players. Uh, I do think um, if the Rams want to win, they're going to get to Tom Brady and run the ball, uh, which they, they have two great running backs uh, with Todd Gurley and CJ, who, who's the freshest guy in the league right now, as he <laughs> said. Um, but for some reason, just in my gut, I just feel like somehow, some way, the Patriots and Brady find a way to pull it out. Well, yeah. well, here's the thing. It's your gut. But we've also seen it year in and year exactly. out. Yeah. You, uh, it, it's, hard, it's hard to bet against him. Saquon, yeah. congratulations. We look forward to watching what you do in year two. Thank you. Happy to have you. All right. Coming up on NFL Live, Cam Newton had...